Okay. So, let's try to solve this problem. So, again, if you encounter this kind of problem, always start with an illustration of the problem and then follow by the given. So, let's, let's read. Imagine you throw a ball straight up and then fall straight back to your hand. How long was the uh, ball in the air? if the ball has initial velocity of 50 meter per second. So this is this is the scenario looks like. So we imagine you, you are this. And then you throw a ball straight up. So this is the ball. Now you throw it straight up until it reaches the maximum height. This is the maximum height. By, by the way, the maximum height is the maximum uh, distance in y-axis. So this is the maximum height. Sometimes we represent this as d sub y or the distance in y. Eventually, based on the problem, after some time, it, it lands back into your hand until it reaches your hand once again. So we're computing now for the uh, the flight time of the ball. So how are we going to compute for the flight time of the ball? Let's, of course, identify all the given that we think will help us to solve for the time. Okay, we have here the given. So the given here is the initial velocity. So the V initial is 50 meter per second. So meaning to say, you throw the ball with an initial velocity of 50 meter per second. Now, what I want you to realize here is that when the ball is reaching its maximum height, when it reached the maximum height, okay, the final velocity at the maximum height is zero meter per second at the maximum height, at max height. So we already have here the initial and the uh, final velocity. Now, another thing that might help us to answer this question is let's not us uh, let us not forget the value of the acceleration due to gravity. Why? Because we are talking about here projectile. Or we can say it's somewhat related to pre-fall. So we have here the value of the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meter per second square. So we have here negative 9.8 meter per second square. So that is already our given. Now that we already have this given, let's now calculate for the time. So in order to calculate for the time, let us use the kinematic equation. Oh, we're looking for the time. Uh, let's use the, the final velocity is equal to initial velocity minus gt or plus gt rather. Now, uh, we have this equation and the value of final velocity at the top is 0 meter per second equals the value of initial velocity, which is 50 meter per second, plus the value of g, which is negative 9.8 meter per second square, times the time that we're looking for. Now, let us transpose negative 50 on, on left side. So when you transpose positive 50 to the left side, it will become negative 50 meter per second, equals negative 9.8 meter per second square times the time that we're looking for. Now, to calculate for the time, let's divide both sides by negative 9.8 meter per second square. Negative 9.8 meter per second square. So, negative 50 divided by 9.8, we have negative 9.8, we have 50, 9.8, we have positive 5.1 equals 9.8 divided by 9.8 is 1. So we have here time. 
So we already have the time, which is 5.1 seconds. However, that is the only time when the ball reached the top. How about the time when the ball from the top going back to the hand? What is the value? Okay. In this kind of situation, always remember that the time it reached from the hand to the top is the same time that we need in order the ball from the top going back to the hand. So we have here 5.1 seconds going to the top and then we already have 5.1 seconds going down. So we just simply multiply it to 2. So in order to find the total flight time, since we're looking for the total flight time from the top and then going back, or we just simply multiply 5.1 seconds into 2. So in order to find the total flight time. So we have here 5.1 seconds times 2. We have 5.1 times 2. We have 10.2 seconds. So this is now the total flight time. Always remember to multiply to 2. Because if we use the kinematic equation, we're just simply find the time to reach the top. So we need to double the time in order to get the total flight time. Okay. 